morning. I'm going to go ahead and open the staff hearing officer meeting of March 6, 2024. My name is Ellen Kokinda. Uh, first, we're going to start with preliminary matters. Any requests for continuances, withdrawals, postponements, or addition of ex agenda items? Um, I do not have any um, any things to announce at this moment. Um, so moving on to announcement and appeals. Um, I don't have any announcements or appeals at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and open up public comment for items not on today's agenda. So if anyone in the audience wishes to speak on items not on today's agenda, please let me know. Or if we have anyone attending via Zoom who wishes to speak on general public comment. Okay, on checking Zoom, I do not see any raised hands or participants at this time. Okay, and I don't see anyone in the audience um, wishing to speak, so I'll close general public comment, and we can move into our first item, which is 1209 Del Oro. Uh, this is a proposal for a 463-square-foot first-floor addition, a 262-square-foot garage addition, and a new 638-square-foot second story, which includes two decks. The 6,098 square foot site is developed with a 1,031 square foot single unit, uh, single story residence and attached 230 square foot uh, garage. The garage is non-conforming to the front setback. The 2,624 square foot proposed total is 97% of the maximum required floor to lot area ratio. And the discretionary application under the jurisdiction of the staff hearing officer at this hearing is a front setback modification to allow the existing garage to continue to encroach into the front setback along with the reconfiguration of its roof and a conforming second story addition. And just to note that staff has determined that this project is exempt from further environmental review pursuant to California Environmental Quality Act guidelines section 15301 for existing facilities um, and then 15305 for minor land use limitations. Uh, we have Ms. Burkhart here who is the case planner. Um, whenever you're ready, if you would um, please go ahead and present this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kokinda. Uh, appreciate that introduction. Um, I'll first orient you to the site. Um, I think this FAR study is a good image to look Pardon at. Pardon my interruption. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you uh, do the laptop? It was working before. Is it? Let's try it one more time. OK. Apologies, everyone. Hey, would you mind what? Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Now, whenever you're, <laughs> whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you. I'm going to have us look at the, uh, this page is an, an FAR study, but I think it's nice. It shows the project site in relation to the neighborhood. Um, this is Shoreline Drive below, and then below Shoreline Drive is Shoreline Park, um, just to orient you. The existing residence is a single story residence um, with a one car garage that is non conforming to the front setback. This is the existing residence, um, and we can see other images of surrounding properties. The neighborhood is a mix of similar developments from the original um, marine terrace development as well as other properties that have been. Um, altered with additions and second stories. Um, the existing residence, again, is just a single story with a one-car garage. Um, these are some elevations of the existing. The proposal is to add some square footage to the rear of the house to also extend the single-car garage back to a two-car garage, um, which is obviously a tandem situation. Um, transportation planning is supportive of this. Um, the project also includes a new second story. Um, it's a primary bedroom bathroom suite with a deck out front and then some green roofing of the roofs, roof lines or rooftops below. And there's some roofs, it's kind of a, a series of shed roofs and some flat roofs as well for the garage. Um, here are the elevations. Um, the overall height is under 25 feet. And then here are some sections. And I think I'll land back maybe here for a discussion of the project against our code and, and policy. Um, as I stated, the site is located in a single family residential zone. Um, the site is constrained by existing development. Um, we have that non-conforming front setback situation with the garage. Um, no change to the location of the existing encroachment is proposed. Um, changes to the roof configuration would occur. The existing roof is um, a side gable with a five and 12 pitch, it's approximately 14 and a half feet in height. The new roof uh, would be flat with parapet and it's approximately 12 feet, nine inches in height. Um, and no portion of the new construction would be within any setback. The new construction is completely conforming to our zoning, um, to applicable zoning regulations. Um, one alternative to the garage um, would be to create a, a traditional side-by-side -side two car garage, push it out of the setback. Um, however, that was deemed infeasible just due to the extent of demolition that would be required to facilitate that would likely result in a substantial redevelopment of the entire residence, which of course the applicant team wants to stay away from. Um, staff is supportive of the modification request. It would allow an existing condition to continue um, in terms of the garage encroachment with also allowing um, reconfiguration of the roof. The project would be consistent with the purposes and intent of our Title 28 uh, Coastal Zoning Ordinance because the essential residential characteristics of the zone would be maintained. Um, the project would promote a uniformity of improvement because the current location of the garage is consistent with the existing pattern of development in the neighborhood. A lot of those original garages are now non-conforming to front setback. Um, it would also prevent unreasonable hardship by allowing this portion of the garage to remain instead of requiring it to be demolished and rebuilt. Um, also, the SFDB has reviewed the project, the Single Family um, Design Board. They provided positive comments regarding the aesthetic appropriateness of allowing the roof alterations to the garage and allowing it to continue to encroach into the front setback. Um, as you stated, the project does qualify for 
CEQA exemptions. It also qualifies for a coastal exemption um, from a coastal development permit um, under the single family residence ex exemption. Um, so staff does recommend the staff hearing officer grant the modification, uh, making the findings that we've outlined in section eight of this staff report. Um, and I'll conclude my presentation and hand it over to Mr. Moore. Thank you, Ms. Burkhart. And yeah, sorry, we're, if you don't mind, you can either pass over the... Oh, I don't think the mic's on. Kevin Thank Moore, you. architect for the owner. Do we have the other, the, the colored plans available on this? The supplement, yeah, that's the one. Perfect. Thank you. That was a, a pretty thorough uh, explanation. So I'm just going to touch briefly on uh, some other points. Uh, as was mentioned, SFDB, SFDB uh, was favorable, uh, made favorable comments at conceptual, the conceptual level. Um, just to point out. These are some other houses in the in the area that are a little bit more modern in style. These two down here, this one is under construction currently on Shoreline. This one was recently um, reviewed and approved by SFDB, and I think they actually have started on that one as well. Um, and then just to give you a sense, this is a project that we did over on the other side of the Mesa, on the West Mesa over by uh, the Douglas Family Preserve, very similar style that we're uh, looking to achieve on this, this project. So this is similar materials, similar style roof, although the roof is flat in this case. Um, the SFDB found this image helpful. Uh, this is just the 3D model superimposed over the streetscape. Uh, you can see how it is kind of blends in with the height and mass. Massing is pushed towards the center. Another reason that uh, keeping the garage, the single, car, the, at least the tandem configuration of the single car garage is good is that it helps us modulate that massing towards the middle and away from the front property line. Um, it also it also achieves a better design aesthetic, I think, for the neighborhood in general, because this, this is an example over here of what happens. You end up with a facade dominated by a, a two-car wide garage. And I, you know, aesthetically, I think it's better to minimize the garage frontage. And uh, I think it's better for everybody. And then lastly, we, we have a, come on. An image, if we can get to it. More colorful image of, of what we're proposing. So I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, now I'm gonna open it up to public comment. May I steal my mouse pad? If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak um, at this time, um, sorry, just trying to get my setup. If there's anyone who wishes to speak on this item, uh, 1209 Del Oro, um, please raise your hand if you're attending via Zoom or if you're in the audience, please let me know if you wish to speak. I don't see anyone in the audience uh, wishing to speak at this time, and I didn't receive any written correspondence. Ms. Gu, do we have anyone via Zoom who wishes, uh, who's raised their hand? On checking Zoom, I, for this particular item, I do not see any raised hands or participants All this right. time. I'll go ahead and close public comment, uh, and we can go back um, to this. Um, so 
I'm quite familiar with this section of the code and what you're subjected to. Um, I, this is a really straightforward project. You've got a situation where you've got a non-conforming garage, but you've uh, proposed a conforming second story addition, uh, which is quite common in this particular neighborhood. We've seen many of the homes as witnessed here, a number of them have had second story additions. Um, so I didn't, and I appreciate both um, Ms. Burkhart and Mr. Moore, your presentations of kind of looking at the design alternatives, because that was going to be some of my questions of just trying to understand kind of what was the rationale that went into this. Um, and I agree with you in terms of our single family design board guidelines, despite the fact that I'm not, I'm not the rev design review authority. I'm looking at other guidelines and again, trying to have a communication based on the SFDB's comments. Um, but having, by proposing something, uh, by doing any kind of work that would add a two car garage, would be substantial redevelopment, which is a completely different type of project, and uh, can completely understand why the owner and as the architect why you would avoid that at all cost. Um, this particular request, you're not encroaching any more than the current situation, and you've got a second story conforming addition. Um, it's just an unfortunate way that the code is written and has been interpreted with it's it's very technical so it's it's kind of like you got caught up in this uh this technicality um so again i completely agree with um why you chose not to pursue a uh, two-car garage have that really kind of take over the facade of the residence again what we're trying to avoid in general and really um, minimize that impact uh, keep the development um, in a conforming situation so that really all you're asking for is to maintain that line for for the existing garage which is already there so um, again Apologies for the technicalities. It's a it's a tough one, and um, but I can agree with staff's comments and uh, the assessment. I think you have a beautiful project. I think it'll fit really well into the neighborhood. Um, I can go ahead and approve this front setback modification, uh, making all the findings as drafted in the staff report, and I also agree with the uh, environmental review exemption. So I can confirm that. I don't have any other conditions to add. Again, this is uh, you've you've done a conforming addition, um, and I think that um, the the design considerations were really um, smart in order to, again, try to reduce the, the scope of the project, but also create a new, a completely new home um, for, for your applicant, or for your um, client. So I wish you luck at SFDB. I do want to let you know that my decision is an appealable action within 10 calendar days of this decision. Anyone can submit an appeal, um, or any member of the Planning Commission could suspend my decision during that same 10 calendar days. Um, but yeah, I wish you luck with your next steps, and we'll move on to the next project. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. OK, let's go back to our next. And um, Ms. Burkhart, or Ms. Carson, can you hand me the um, mouse? Or the, what do you need? The keyboard? Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. OK, sounds good. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move on to our next item, which is 952 Alameda Padre Serra. Uh, this is a 13,939 square foot lot. It's located within the Foothill High Fire Zone and developed with a 1,389 square foot single story residence and a 338 square foot detached one car garage accessed off of Alameda Padre Serra. The project is a request to construct a 796 square foot single story accessory dwelling unit in the secondary front yard along Robel Lane with a new uncovered parking space in the front setback. A modification is requested for the new uncovered parking space, retaining wall, fence, stairs, and landing from the parking and the stairs leading to the roof deck in the secondary front setback on Robel Lane. An interior setback modification is also requested for the rear deck of the accessory dwelling unit because it's not considered an integral part of the ADU and therefore must comply with the 10 foot interior setback. The discretionary applications under the jurisdiction of the staff hearing officer for this hearing, an interior setback modification, 
to allow the rear deck to encroach into the eastern interior setback, and then a front setback modification to allow the proposed parking space and associated improvements to encroach into the front setback on Robo Lane. And we have, let's see, oh, um, one last thing is that staff has determined that this project qualifies for an exemption from further environmental review under sections 15303, new construction, um, and 15305, minor alterations and land use alterations. Um, we have Ms. Garson here um, who has graciously um, stepping, filling in for um, our assigned case planner. And uh, we, whenever you're ready, um, and I think, uh, yeah, well, we're going to keep it. Give me one moment. I'm going to pull sure. up the plans. Okay. So you're going to be navigating? You're going to navigate, okay. and I'm just going to give you this, but I have to pull it up here first. Um, let's see. Plans and... Here we go. Okay. And if there's anything else supplemental in the photo, or in the file. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Okay, so I see. Where is my zoom in here? Where's the, um, like the toolbar that I can pin? To? I think if you go down, if you move your, here. either, nope, if you move it, yeah. Okay. I don't know, that might be some, there yeah. you go. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Kokinda. Holly Garson, Assistant Planner with Planning and Zoning. And as you stated, I'm representing this project today on behalf of Ms. Kelly Broadison, the assigned case planner. Okay, so on the screen, we have the cover sheet and we just, we get a glimpse here, bird's eye view of the project location and then the general vicinity and the project's located at 925 Alameda Padre Serra, or APS. It's in the Riviera neighborhood. <laughs> this is different, okay. <laughs> uh, bear with me. There will be no judgment on your navigation because it's completely different than what you're used to. Okay, so here we have the existing site survey and the parcel is uh, 13,937 square feet or 0.35 acres and it has an average slope of 42%. It's zoned residential single unit and it is surrounded by other single unit parcels and it has a foothill high fire hazard zone overlay and you can see here the existing residents I'll zoom in a bit. Some other site developments such as decks, hardscape, landscape, uh, walking paths. And the parcel does have two um, front setbacks because uh, there's, a, there's Alameda Padre Serra located to the south and then we have Robo Lane located to the north. So it's a through lot. Oops. And here we have some site photos. You can see the front of the residence as viewed from APS. And then here you can see just an overhead. Here's the existing residence, APS to the south, Robo Lane to the north. And you can kind of start to see the patterns of development in the neighborhood. Um, you can you see that there's generally a structure on, on facing each portion of the street, except for this lot here. And then here you can see the general location of where the proposed uh, special accessory dwelling unit will be. Here's some more site photos of the property as seen from the street frontage and on site. So you start to kind of get a sense of, of the site constraints that these lots are facing up here with steep topography and some narrow streets. This is the site from Robo Lane, so at the top on site. Here you can see the steep topography. Actually, I wanna go back to this photo for a minute too, because you can see here that there are many driveways sort of pulling right off the road and 
there's, there's several other cars parked along the street. So that's a typical pattern of development in this neighborhood. All right. So here we have our overall site plan. And again, you can see the single story residence here existing and the existing garage. This is accessed off APS, um, other existing site development. And there's a shed here located in the interior setback that will be relocated out of setbacks. And then you see the, pro the project proposes to construct the 796 square foot single unit special accessory dwelling unit, including a rear balcony and roof deck. And this is in the secondary front yard along Robo Lane here. And there is a new uncovered required parking space in the front setback. And all applicable city departments have reviewed this project and have deemed it complete to move forward to the staff hearing officer today. So the request before the staff hearing officer today are a front setback modification to allow the new uncovered parking space here, uh, associated retaining walls, fence, stairs, and landing from the parking and the stairs leading to the roof deck for the ADU to encroach, which is here, to encroach into the front setback uh, um, off Robo Lane. And then we also are asking for an interior setback modification to allow the rear cantilevered ADU balcony to encroach into the base zone 10 foot easterly interior setback. Uh, the balcony cannot take advantage of the ADU reduced setback of four feet because it's not considered an integral part of the ADU. So that balcony is here and I'll zoom in on that in the next slide. Now uh, the project was heard by the Single Family Design Board Consent Calendar on May 8th, 2023. And those meeting minutes are attached to the staff report. And the SFDB generally supported the project, stating that the design of the ADU successfully implements design elements from the main structure, such as the board and bat siding and the shed roof. The board said due to the topography of the lot, the ADU is not visible from the street. They said that due to the nature of the neighborhood, uh, the modifications were aesthetically supportable. And they did ask the applicant to study reducing the depth of the roof deck to push it back from the fence line when the project does return to the SFDB for review after this staff hearing officer hearing. And the applicant was also asked to provide additional photos of the landscaping around the roof deck to determine screening for the neighbors. So here on the screen, this is a focused site plan um, specifically of the ADU uh, and those site features that encroach into the front yard. So Robo Lane again is at the top of the page. And just to orient you, it's a little difficult to see, but this heavy blue line here that outlines the parcel, that is the property line. And then we see here indicated the 30 foot front setback and then if you look here, this green dashed line, that would be the 10 foot base stone uh, interior setback. It's also on this side of the property. And then we have the blue dashed line, it's a lighter blue, that's the ADU setback, which is four feet. So you can see where the balcony encroaches into the Eastern interior setback there. So everything within this space is considered within the front setback and also within the secondary front yard. And, and that's what the first modification is requesting to allow encroachment. And staff is supportive of this request and recommends that the staff hearing officer approve the front setback modification because it constitutes an appropriate improvement for the lot due to the topography, topography of the property um, and the fact that there are the two 30 foot front setbacks, there's no other conforming options to locate the required parking space elsewhere on the site. And there are many properties in the neighborhood as we saw in those photos with parking in the front setback. So the proposal is consistent with the pattern of development in the immediate neighborhood. The proposed development would be consistent with the purposes and intent of the Title 30 zoning ordinance because the essential residential characteristics of the zone would be maintained. 
And then the other ask is for this portion of the ADU rear balcony to encroach into the eastern interior setback. I'll show you this on the floor plan. Here's the ADU floor plan, first floor, second floor. Um, again, the setback property lines and, and different setback lines are identified here. So it's this portion here that encroaches. Um, and it's approximately five feet, seven inches from the property line, but the neighbor who's located here, who would be most impacted and, and directly to the east at 961 Robo Lane has provided a letter of support for the project specific to this encroachment. So here are the proposed elevations for the accessory dwelling unit. Um, I should point out at this, um, oh, actually, yeah, again here, if you could just imagine drawing a line, this would be the portion that encroaches. So staff is actually not supportive of this request and recommends to the staff hearing officer to deny the interior setback modification because the proposed balcony, it could be reduced in size as to not encroach into the setback and the encroachment is not necessary to secure an appropriate improvement on the lot or to prevent unreasonable hardship and therefore the required findings cannot be made. Approval of a setback modification in this instance would not would, would not be consistent with the purposes and intent of a setback, which is to provide openness on a site and relief between structures um, if further development were to happen next door or even on this parcel. And then as you've mentioned regarding the environmental review, we determined that it qualifies for an exemption under CEQA and none of the exceptions apply to the project. Um, lastly, this isn't in the provided written staff report, but I do want to make a recommendation to the staff hearing officer that should the project be approved today um, to consider a project condition of approval stating that the two pepper trees located in the front setback for removal shall be reviewed and approved as appropriate by the city's parks and rec department prior to project design approval. Um, so I can just point those out on the site plan quickly. Oops. That's here and here, which is essentially necessary to, to build this required parking space for the project. And we also, there's civil sheets in the set. I didn't present those. I can pull those up or the applicant can if needed. And I am here for questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Carson, for stepping in and being so thorough with your presentation. I'd like to invite the applicant up, if you could, or the applicant team, homeowners. Um, and if you could walk me through um, your design considerations, your requests, kind of your rationale for making these uh, choices and pursuing this particular um, design in its location. And that would be very helpful. Thank you, uh, Ellen Bildston, architect for the owner, and the owner is here, Gail Fisher. Um, so uh, thank you, um, Ms. Garson, for, a real, as you said, a very thorough um, presentation. Um, I feel like there's not that much more to say other than um, to maybe walk you through some of the design considerations that we had for the ADU. Um, as you know, we're here for two modification requests, the one being the, um, the front yard uh, encroachment in order to accommodate parking, which is required in the high fire area that this is located in. And um, it sounds like that is being supported by staff. Um, and we very much appreciate the that um, view of things and um, feel it's a, a really necessary thing in order to make this project work. Um, if, let's see, I am able to, oh boy. You okay. are, so um, <laughs> that mouse will. Not this one, this one? Oops, um, actually, one. Holly, do you mind helping oh. uh, Ms. Bildston out? Sorry. These weird things pop up. <laughs> um, okay. Just click out of it, okay? okay. I don't, good okay, to know great. what the weather is in Santa Barbara. Yeah, okay. and how the politics is going. Yeah, I know, <laughs> just a little dose of, 
reality here. Okay. Okay, so I think, I mean, as Ms. Garson presented, you know, this is our survey. As you can see, there's a substantial easement along the western edge of the property, um, which makes it so that uh, even though the ADU could be within four feet of this interior setback, that actually wasn't an option in this case because of that 10-foot easement. Um, so you'll see that. And I just want, also wanted to point out here the point we were making with this diagram was just that it's a heavily wooded site, and even though the ADU is there, you are not unable to see it. Also, we came for a concept review of the ADU and got very favorable comments back from the board. Um, wow. Uh, maybe that goes better. Here we go. Um, so you can see then, you know, given the, the property line along this edge with the four foot setback and then the 10 foot required setback on this side, along with a few very substantial trees, um, you know, we were trying to, you know, they had a 30 foot setback. So locating the ADU uh, in the way that we did was, um, seemed like the most workable location on, as we said earlier, it's a 40 plus um, percent slope on the site overall. So it's, it's a pretty challenging location. So um, the steps that are in this encroachment are required to just get us to the ADU. Um, then, you know, uh, be, again, because of trees and so on, our main direction of, of approach to the, the ADU is along the eastern side. And so the public living space uh, made sense to be on this side of things, and then the bedroom areas on, on this other side. Um, there's some really nice views, as you can imagine, um, from from this location on the site. And so having a place to step out, it's shy of 800 square feet. So there's not really that, you know, it's not a large living place to start with. And then to have a nice place to step out to was part of the whole design concept behind uh, what we came up with. Um, we, yeah, subsequently realized that, you know, the that balcony is needing to meet different criteria than the ADU itself, and so therefore, um, we we are in the situation of this modification. But essentially, you can see in the design, it's a you know a, a kind of a great room concept of kitchen and dining and living um, that then looks out to the view um, over over the ocean and then the bedrooms are tucked back in over here as we pointed out earlier. Um, so the design idea was that that this, this space, which is the great room public living area, just sort of translates to spill out onto this um, additional space and kind of ties aesthetically with, um, with the, con the construction of that that kind of great room and then the balcony fully going across um, as an extension of that space. We have windows and sliding doors and things that also translate. So if this needed to come back, it would we'd have to rethink a lot of things about how this whole space functions. Um, so I think that's probably the main stuff for us to cover, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Bildsman. Um, and now I'm going to open it up to public comment. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this item, uh, 952 Alameda Padre Serra, um, you can come up to the podium and fill out a speaker slip. Um, and I do want to acknowledge that I received written correspondence from Diane E. Ward um, that was distributed to me prior to the hearing. Um, and yeah, if you want to, um, do you mind handing me the mouse back, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, hang on just one second. Um, there is. Yeah, so one moment. <coughs> 
Okay, if you could just announce your name for the record, and you'll have two minutes to speak. Yeah, my name is Earl Wilcox. I live at 960, which is... Is it on? Okay. Earl Wilcox. I live at 960, which is right across the street on Roble, uh, from this project. And I just a couple of questions. Trying to understand how the actual access to the parking is going to work. That It's kind of a very difficult street. There's a lot of winding and uh, curves on it, and it's fairly narrow. And so we have a lot of issues with traffic there. And then the other, how will it affect the placement of the fire hydrant, which is right there uh, next to the property line? Uh, hang on just one second. So do you have any, because this is your time to speak, and and so we'll just be able, to, If are there any other questions or comments that you want to have? You can, you'll just tell me all of your concerns now, and then I'll be able okay, to so, close yeah. public comment and transition. Yeah, no, so I think the, the big thing is how the property is going to be accessed in terms of the traffic that's on the street, uh, particularly the parking right there. Uh, because there is a very unusual driveway right next to it. Uh, there's a dip at the bottom. There's a very sharp curve at the top. So there's a lot of um, tr kind of weird traffic congestion, even though there aren't a lot of cars on that street. When they come through there, they come through at very high rates of speed. And it's just a very challenging um, space for anybody who's on that street. There are no sidewalks. So we're just trying to understand how that parking is going to impact it. Okay. Is that all your comments? That's, that'll okay. take care of it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. I appreciate it. Um, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? Yes. And Mr. Wilcox, if you wouldn't mind just filling out that speaker slip and then turning that into Ms. Gu over here. And then if you could please introduce yourself and um, for just for the record. And uh, you also will have two minutes to speak. Hang on just one moment. Let me know when it starts. Whoa. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Hi. Good morning. My name is Angelo Salvucci. I'm a friend of the applicant, and I walk from my home on Franceschi Road across Roble um, to her place frequently. What I um, have noticed is there are a number of uh, vehicles parked partially on the road, on Roble Road. If you look carefully, though, at the plans for this uh, proposed modification, the vehicle is completely off the road. In fact, and I want to part, also address the letter from Ms. Ward, you'll see that this increases the width of the road for the passage of emergency vehicles and for any vehicles this gentleman is concerned about. So rather than decreasing or narrowing the road, it increases it by paving alongside of the existing road. So I, I would appreciate if you'd consider that as well. Thank you so much for your comments. Okay, anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? Um, I don't see any. Uh, Ms. Gu, do we have anyone via um, Zoom who wishes to speak? Upon checking Zoom, I do not see any raised hands or participants at this time. Okay, Thank you. let's go back to the plans. I'm gonna go ahead and close public comment. And, and Ms. Garson, if you could also come up. Um, So, Ms. Bilston, mm -hmm. it sounds yes. like you, you <laughs> had an answer ready, and um, I'm right, going to put sorry. you on the spot because, um, because I know that, again, Ms. Garson has uh, agreed to present on behalf of the other assigned case planner who's unfortunately out today. Mm -hmm. um, but could you talk us through a little bit about kind of the, the driveway design? Mm -hmm. And um, so just to acknowledge for everyone in the public and for um, Ms. Ward, who, who wrote in, um, any time an application comes into our uh, department um, before it even comes to this hearing. It's routed to all the different divisions and departments. So it was routed to transportation planning and traffic engineering and fire and uh, planning and public works. And so the there's a it's called our land development team. So there's a comprehensive review of what happens before an applicant can move on. And we have to 
ensure that different codes are met, that we're looking at all these items, that we're addressing safety concerns. So, um, but again, I think it's really valuable to understand kind of the context of like how this was designed and how you worked with our city teams to come up with something that, um, that they could sign off on and determine it to be uh, complete and, and meet certain thresholds. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, so to, to respond to the speaker's concern, so um, this site plan demonstrates the elements of uh, infrastructure that exist alongside of the road currently, and they're all to remain as they are. So there is a fire hydrant, um, and I forget, so, and this is very small, but there's a tree, there's a fire hydrant, and some other thing. Maybe, Gail, do you know exactly there's what that no is? There's a tree that, that will be protected, mm -hmm. and then the fire hydrant. It's I'm sorry, do you mind using the microphone? It's really for our recording for, um, for people in the audience. Sure. Um, there's a fire hydrant right there in the center, right Yes, right there. Mm -hmm. And then there's an oak tree that um, we will be protecting. Right. And I'll just point out that um, this is the property line. Um, so the requirement that we have when we build an ADU in high fire areas that we have on site parking. And so it well, it, uh, it's adjacent to the public right of way, but it's actually on site with that line being the, um, you know, the line within which we are locating the parking. Um, be, due to the steepness of the lot, there is no other workable location for the car to be located. Um, but in any case, we are outside of the right of way with where the car would sit. And then getting to that spot, of course, one would come in off of the right of way to get on site um, to locate the car there. Another thing I just wanted to briefly mention is we do have a letter of support from the neighbor who lives at this property immediately adjacent to the east side of our property um, in favor of allowing for the modification for this one uh, last little piece of the balcony um, to encroach within the 10 foot setback. Thank you. And going back to the parking area, it also looks like you're proposing uh, improvements to the public right of way in order to accommodate that particular parking space. Yes. And that's also something that transportation and public works engineering reviewed yes. and essentially were supportive of. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's right. And we understand that there will be a public works permit required um, since we are doing that work in the public right of way to get to this on-site parking location. And did transportation staff, um, like, you know, does it matter which way you're coming in from Robley Lane as far as which direction or different ways? Because I know that one of the things that transportation staff look at is kind of the maneuvering of parking mm -hmm. spaces and that also has to, the um, standards have to be met in order to achieve mm -hmm. certain parking design. Um, was there any additional feedback that you received or are they supportive of it kind of coming in either way from either direction? Yes, they were supportive of a car coming from either direction, um, recognizing that there's space here for getting into this spot. Um, so regardless of which direction, yeah, there were there were no concerns expressed by transportation okay. for this configuration. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I'm just curious um, with the other portion with the deck. Um, and trying to understand, so um, I just to be clear, I went out on site, I did look at this both from APS and um, Roble Lane, and um, I did not walk down the site, or I should say hike down the site. <laughs> I did not have hiking boots on, and perhaps being eight months pregnant, I was less adventurous, but yeah, we get it. <laughs> um, I think that um, I wanted to understand, I, I, it was helpful to kind of see see some of your design thinking as to the, the location of the accessory dwelling unit. Um, but I'm curious as to the edge of along the interior lot line closest to that eastern deck, 
Um, is there any screening proposed? Or I just don't have a sense of what the, um, how the steps work alongside and how it's screened between uh, the neighboring property, the, the closest adjacent parcel. Um, yes, we, we um, had to take the fence down because we realized when the survey was done that um, they had actually, the property lines were wrong and there was an eight feet difference in the property line. And um, so the fence came down, um, but we're gonna put the fence back up. So there'll be complete screening. So between the, the proposed deck, the rear deck, and that where the, right, where uh, Ms. Bilson and your mouse mm -hmm. is moving, there mm -hmm. will be mm -hmm. um, screening there. Yeah, um, and, and the deck will just face south. It won't face um, east. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, that was one of my questions. Um, I think, um, did, um, I know that it seems like it was kind of a late in the game that um, it seems like the trees that are proposed, um, can you identify the two trees that need to be removed for the parking? to create the right. parking area. Those are yeah. the two pepper trees, if, if That's right. is that accurate? That's right, so they're up near the, um, let me see, maybe I can zoom in more. Yes, okay. I think that'll make it more visible. Here we go. So it's, um, these two yellow circles with the green broken line around them, those are two existing pepper trees that are there currently and would need to be removed in order to make way for this parking location. I um, mean, we understand that we need to follow up with parks um, to, you know, uh, we were paying a lot of attention to the oaks, um, right. not, not as much to the peppers, but right. yeah, we understand that needs okay. to be. Uh, I just wanted to be clear, and I'm uh, sorry that that wasn't called out, because generally that's a completeness item that we would request mm -hmm. for that approval to happen in advance. Um, mm -hmm. But again, this is a really, it's, um, you know, it, it's likely missed because of not, it, there's a lot of things to put there's a lot things. going so, on here. <laughs> there's a lot going on. So maybe mm -hmm. you could also, um, it. I know that you're honoring the 30-foot secondary front setback mm -hmm. in order to propose the ADU. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious why you didn't move that up closer to Robley Lane, or again, was it to achieve a certain size? What was kind of the rationale to maintain that particular secondary front setback? Or was it Our, the site conditions just based on, yeah. like, the, just curious, knowing that the, the grading and the elevations, how, how challenging any design would be for this? I mean, I think our approach was, as it always is at our firm, is to come up with a solution that wasn't going to require a modification of any sort, and we it only came to light later on that we were going to need this modification and and also this one. So um, yeah, our our intent was to just comply with required setbacks and not need to have a modification process involved in the project. Okay, thank you. And that makes sense to kind of design for that and then figure out what what kind of feedback you get through the review, our internal review process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think those are all the questions I have at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. I do want to just acknowledge, um, again, a couple of points made by our public speakers that, again, this project, all of our projects are subject to an intense review by other city staff and to make sure that um, that different code requirements are addressed, safety requirements, um, that, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll talk about the, the parking space first um, because in order to design, or in order to achieve an accessory dwelling unit in the high fire hazard area, you need that parking space. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize, you know, the parking both on 
APS and on Roble Lane is extremely difficult and kind of wild to navigate. I mean, I drove up there myself and probably uh, did something that really frustrates all of you as uh, residents up there and kind of was like partially on the street and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I've got a city sticker on this vehicle and I'm gonna get in trouble. But, um, but I think that um, the way that I'm looking at this is again, the, the state allows developments of accessory dwelling units and trying to create a process. We have our city ordinance that applies this uh, additional parking space requirement. Um, this applicant is trying to achieve that by adding a parking spot and actually creating what I see as a safer situation um, because there will be parking, uh, sufficient parking that is for one vehicle. I, you know, this should not be used for more than one vehicle. Um, it's, it's just designed for one, um, but the way that um, the, context, the current context um, does not allow for a parking space there. Um, so in order to even achieve the accessory dwelling unit, you need the parking space, and, um, and, and it sounds, again, I'm confident that this particular project has been reviewed to accommodate the parking, to accommodate the maneuverability, to accommodate the high fire um, standards that are required. So again, going through our fire department review um, and, and this will sufficiently address the parking space um, that is required. Um, base, like this will still need to go through parks and rec commission review for those, the removal of those two setback trees. Um, there's different jurisdictions of trees. And so setback trees are governed by Parks and Rec Commission. Um, so it's kind of one more step in the process. Um, so it's a little awkward um, to have to kind of go through that separately. Um, but again, I'm supportive of the parking configuration and the location and, um, you know, supportive of the, the tree removal, um, knowing that, again, the appreciation for the types of trees that you're proposing to remove, I'm no expert and this is going to, again, be a Parks and Rec Commission decision, um, but I do wanna just acknowledge that it is necessary to secure an appropriate improvement on the lot and I agree with staff's assessment for the front setback modification and can make those findings. Um, I think there are some other safety concerns landslide that Ms. Ward brought up. Um, this will have to go, once it gets all the planning approvals, this project will have to go on to the building permit process and they'll submit a full building permit application. And that application is then again routed to all the different city reviewers and departments where we assess code, we do, you know, we look at soil quality, there it goes through all kinds of review for safety um, and trying to ensure um, that a project is, you know, meeting, meeting really stringent requirements for that. Um, so again, I, I want to acknowledge reading your comment, but I feel confident that this can be um, engineered in a way that it addresses those concerns through the building permit application process and review. Um, with the deck, I'm really looking, I'm kind of taking a step back and looking at this as a whole. You've got a highly constrained lot to work with. You've got, um, you know, it's quite wide, the parcel's quite wide at APS, but then it narrows dramatically towards Robley Lane, and then it jogs in towards your adjacent neighbor. What is that? At, 930 or the your easterly neighbor um, and so that you know so you've kind of lost some area there with this kind of irregular parcel shape um, Miss Bilston you mentioned at the beginning of your presentation kind of the constraint um, accessory dwelling units have a lower th um, setback threshold so they can be at four feet but um, from the set interior setbacks or um, from setbacks. However, in this scenario, there's a, an easement going along the, this um, westerly lot line. So that poses yet another challenge of having to try to come up with a design concept that is sufficient, you know, that sufficiently works within these boundaries. So you're starting to see all these constraints come in. Um, and also understanding your original intention of trying to honor that 30 foot setback for the, um, 
the secondary front setback uh, um, from Robley Lane, and that's kind of the original intention of the design and how it kind of stemmed from there. Um, so I think that with all of those constraints, um, yes, you could have angled it differently, but that just doesn't, it doesn't necessarily follow the pattern of development. It doesn't necessarily capture, you know, other intentions of you as a homeowner to capture the best view or, you know, the just kind of other design considerations. Um, so I think overall you're working with, um, very difficult circumstances. I think you have, um, a really, um, well thought out accessory dwelling unit in general. And I think that um, the deck is, it's not, it, it kind of, again, kind of follows a similar size. It's not excessive. Um, my biggest concern would be for privacy and noise and just different nuisances. And I think um, given the context, um, and even though you have neighbor support, um, that I don't, you know, I take that into consideration, but I also think about, um, you know, that neighbor might not live there. So it's kind of how, how would someone generally over time experience this particular deck? And so um, I appreciate getting the neighbor support, um, but I think for me what solidifies it is to know that there will be screening. So um, along that, you know, having um, fencing along there, um, and, and kind of creating that, that buffer and having a, a little bit more privacy, again, kind of mitigate some of the noise. Um, and it's such a, you know, it's, I can imagine, um, w with those in place, um, and you also receive favorable comments at the single family design board. And so that's also a helpful communication to have. So I feel like, again, this is a smart design. Um, and I, uh, just want to acknowledge that staff tend to, with their recommendation of denial, are going to come in being a little bit more stringent and, you know, have a little bit uh, more of a conservative viewpoint. Um, but uh, oftentimes, when I, again, when I go out on site, when I understand the context, um, I can look at, I'm looking at things a little bit differently. Um, and, and so they're going to take the more conservative stance. In this instance, I, I can support it given the, the level of intentionality to try to create additional privacy and, um, again, just seeing the constraints. So I will be able to approve the Eastern Interior Setback Modification, um, and I will have to draft new findings for approval for this um, because I disagree. Um, but again, with the, I think this is a highly constrained lot, and you're trying to just achieve a basic design. And yes, we acknowledge that decks are not the integral part of the accessory dwelling unit, but we all know that if you're living off of APS or Robley Lane, you're going to have a deck. And so this is kind of a, a natural feature to a residence, and that um, I think it, I could argue for both reasons that it's um, a, a necessary improvement to the to the accessory dwelling unit as well as um, having uh, the because your lot is so constrained that you're just trying to um, you know again achieve basic expectations of what a residence might have or an accessory dwelling unit might have um, so I will have to, um, my approvals for both of those things that will come with the condition. Um, I'm sorry that we missed it, um, but with the condition that you receive Parks and Rec Commission approval for the, the two um, pepper trees at the um, driveway at, along Robley Lane, because the, that's their jurisdiction. Um, so then you'll be able to um, pursue your building permit application from there, or ex single family design, let's not skip steps, single family design board approval and then, um, and then building permit applications. So the parks and rec will have to go first before mm -hmm. project design approval. So those are my decisions. Um, and I just want to, again, thank you for coming out today and, um, and sharing your concerns. And um, I will let everyone know that my actions are appealable and anyone can appeal my action within a 10 calendar uh, day time frame, or any member of the planning commission could suspend my um, action within that same 10 calendar days. But um, yes, I think you have a lovely project and I wish you well moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank All right. you very much.
Okay, um, I am going to go ahead. This was the last item for today, and I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting, the staff hearing officer meeting of um, March 6th. Thank you so much. <laughs>